Hey everyone, Hatter here. A few years ago, I made a video about this stuff. Oyamaru, or as it's sometimes called, blue stuff, is a reusable molding plastic that you can use to make simple copies of miniatures, gunpla parts, or whatever small items you have lying around. Since then, I like to think I'm a little older, I'm a little wiser. I'm starting to get hair in really weird places, man. And I'd like to revisit that topic with new techniques for cleaner, better, two-part molds, and we're going to be using liquid resin instead of epoxy putty for more accurate copies. Plus, along the way, I'd like to share some cool applications I've learned that can really make this stuff a must-have for your hobby. All that said, let's dive in. All right, so for starters, I've got my bowl of scalding hot water that we're going to put our Oyamaru in to get it nice and melty. But before we even start pressing this stuff down, we have some prep work we got to do. First, you'll need a nice big Lego sheet or whatever off-brand building bricks you want to use. I will, of course, put links to all of the tools and supplies I'm using in the description down below. I'll be making copies of a few different parts today, a Zeta Plus wing for a custom that I'm working on, as well as some heat hawks, because who doesn't need more heat hawks? So first, what we're going to do is position our parts on the plate, you know, decent distance away from one another, and we're going to sort of just build a box around them. Now you want to get the mold box as close to the size of the part you're trying to copy as you can without risking them touching the sides of it. And what this is going to do is maximize the efficiency of our blue stuff. Now that we have our heat hawk boxes, we're just going to make some for our wing pieces over here. All right, I think that's good enough for government work. All right, hold your horses. We're not using the blue stuff yet. First, we are going to use some plasticine clay, which is just a modeling clay that does not harden over time and it doesn't, you can't bake it or anything to get it to cure. So it makes it perfect for, you know, reusable applications like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to line the bottom of our mold boxes with this clay in order to hold our parts in place when we start pressing our Oyamaru down onto it. So go ahead and take your parts out and fill these boxes with your clay. Now you might find this stuff difficult to work with by hand, and that is actually a good thing because you want the base of your mold box to be stable. You can always um, work it a little bit or warm it up in order to make it softer. You wanna make sure that it cools back down before you start doing everything. And here's a trick that I'm going to be using a lot this video, is we're just gonna make a smashing tool using other Lego bricks. It's gonna allow us to kind of flatten everything out and make it as close to even as we can get it. All right, now that we've got these boxes pressed in with some clay, we are going to place our parts back in them and do our best to make them nice and even. You don't want any gaps near the edges of your parts that are going to, you know, not get filled up by the Oyamaru. So the better you can pack this into the clay, the better off you'll be. Now, of course, bear in mind that your seam line for the parts is going to be wherever the clay touches on the side of your piece. So, draft accordingly. Use a tool if you have to, to push clay in where you might need some or move it away if you don't want it there.
And then of course the other thing that we are going to want to do is put some sort of holes uh, to serve as guides for when you are putting your two-part molds together. These are just designed to help guide your pieces the two part molds together. So you put a hole on this side that is going to fill up with Oyumaru. And then when we press down the other side, we will hopefully create a channel on that side that matches the look of this one. Now your next step is going to be to build up a higher wall of your mold boxes. This is going to give you room to pack in your Oyamaru. All right, now that I've solved my homemade Tetris puzzle, I've got an insanely hot um, bowl of water here and a very pliable mass of Oyumaru for us to work with. And we have limited time to work with it while it is in its, um, you know, gummy state. So let's do our best with it. We want to try and make sure we smooth out any creases before we put it as smooth side down as we possibly can and just press it into that mold box. Work with it as quickly as you can to fill the mold box, pop any air bubbles that you might see, get in here with your flat smashy tool, This is going to allow you to apply nice, even pressure across your Oyumaru onto the piece that you are trying to copy. All right, so there we have it. We have used our boiling hot water to pack Oyamaru into our mold boxes. We've used our Lego Smasher in order to create a nice flat even surface on the backside and it also allows us to apply a great deal of pressure to make sure that we get the most accurate mold possible using this stuff. You don't have to treat the parts uh, or the mold box with any kind of um, mold release or anything like that. Oyumaru does not stick to anything but itself, which is really awesome. Um, so really, all we got to do now is wait for these base parts of the mold to set. Um, you can try putting these like in the freezer or something. I've found that putting them in, you know, the refrigerator or the freezer will cause them to shrink a little bit and give you a less accurate mold. It's better to just be patient and let the mold cool down naturally. And then we will pop these guys out, flip them over and press down the other half of our two part molds. All right, these guys have been sitting around for an hour, so we're going to go ahead and break our mold box and hopefully get the first half of our two-part mold. Looks like we've got a ton of clay on here that needs to come off. All right, so far so good. We just need to do a very good job of removing all of this excess clay so that we have nice clean molds or as clean as we can get them anyway. Okay, so pro tip, if you do decide to pop your molds in the freezer, you will have a much 
easier time peeling our plasticine clay off. I mean, the, the first one I peeled off came off no problem. So let's see if this one will give us just as much grief. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Again, I do recommend letting them cool down at their own pace at room temperature and then maybe popping the molds in the freezer afterwards in order to do this step. All right, now that we've got these as clean as I think we are going to get them, we can rebox them all and prepare to make the second half of our two part molds. All right, we've got our boiling water. We've got our mass of melty plastic here. Let's make us some molds. All right, there we go. That is the second half of our mold. We just need to wait for these guys to set and we'll be ready to pour some resin. All right, we've given our molds some time to set. Let's go ahead and pop them out, take out the originals and see what we have to work with. All right, now that we have our two part molds ready to go, it's time for the fun part. We can actually make some copies of our gunpla. For this step, I like to put down a piece of scrap cardboard um, just in case we make a mess. It's nice to just kind of let that stuff run onto something that I am not personally attached to. I'm gonna be using a two part clear epoxy resin. This is a slow curing resin, so it's gonna give us a lot of time to work with. And I've found that it actually takes a little longer to cure when we put in the additives that I'm going to be working with, but we'll get to that in a second. But there is a link to this in the description below. First things first, we are going to get out our measuring cups so that we can measure out our one-to-one -one mixture. I also have some disposable pipettes that we can use to stir and hopefully, you know, apply our resin. And now it is time to start pouring. Now I am infamous for making way more of this than I need to. So I'm going to try and limit myself to uh, 10 mils each of our hardener and our epoxy. And that's probably gonna be more than enough for what we're copying here. Cause these are some pretty flat parts. Now there are of course methods you could use to make sure that you measure out the exact amount. You could take, if you had a clean one of these, you know, you could fill it with water, figure out how many milliliters are in there and then use some displacement. You could throw your parts in there and see how much water gets displaced. Um, you know, all that high school chemistry stuff that I'm sure you guys paid attention to. Now this cup is going to be our special cup because in the resin cup, we are actually going to apply a couple of additives. Um, I probably don't want this on the wings that I'm copying, but for the heat hawks, I think we're going to do something pretty cool. And I hope you guys like this technique. So on the topic of additives, I thought to myself, heat hawk. Life is good, but it can be better. You see, I think that similar to how I applied some glow in the dark pigment to this heat hawk, we could in fact use a combination of this is some red glow powder, which when exposed to UV light, you can see turns sort of pink and it retains that glow for a little bit. And we're also going to mix in a little bit of fluorescent yellow. And hopefully the combination of this will give us a nice bright orange that lingers after applied, after it's been in UV light. And it's going to just be a really cool effect to play with. Now, when it comes to adding 
different additives to your resin, it's best to incorporate it before you've combined the resin so that you don't reduce the work time. And also you want to mix it thoroughly into one side of the resin um, before you kind of combine everything together. So what we're going to do, and I don't even know exactly how much of this we're going to end up using. I'm just going to sort of eyeball it. And like I said, since I'm painting the, the wing parts, I'm not too concerned with them being a little glowy. Because I'm going to paint over that. And I'm going to paint over most of the heat hawk anyway. This is really just for the heat hawk blade. And like I said, this is going to inhibit curing for a little bit. So like, for instance, if your if your resin says that it takes 24 hours to cure and to set, maybe go ahead and add an extra eight hours onto that. I have found that when I've put additives in my resin, it doesn't cure as quickly as when it's just raw. And there we go. We've got a nice. Well blended resin all right now that we've got our pigment in place it's time to mix up this resin and pour it up now because of the paint and the glow powder that we've put in here this is probably not going to be crystal clear anymore it's going to be a more opaque color which is okay And again, this particular resin has about a 24 hour cure time. It's probably got about an hour and a half work time. So we have plenty of time to get this into our molds and work with it. I'm probably going to let it set for a couple of days, though, on account of the additives. Like I said, they can inhibit the curing process. And normally on a two part mold, you would have like a channel where you pour into but on account of these being particularly flat pieces, I thought it might be a better idea to almost paint into the mold and then seal it back together. And don't worry about, you know, if, if you're filling the mold completely because the resin is going to expand while it cures. So we're actually going to take steps to make sure that we compress our mold. And we'll get to that in a minute. All right, now just in case, I'm going to go in here with this little toothpick and make sure that uh, all of these little cavities are filled with resin. But so far, it looks pretty good. And you can see that this is a self-leveling formula, so you can kind of see how it like smooths out on the top here. If this was a one part mold, these would turn out amazing. Now for the fun part, we're going to make ourselves some mold sandwiches. I'm going to be using these clamps to make sure that the parts stay together and are held snug in place so that we get the most accurate mold possible, hopefully reduce some flashing, which is like the trim on the outside. Oh, a little smush. Flip it up sideways. Apply our clamp. 
we're just going to go ahead and leave it like that. That should do everything we need it to. All right, the time has finally come for our demolding. So let's see what these new parts look like. So we ended up getting a little bit of flashing, but it's nothing we can't uh, trim off. I think that this looks pretty dang good for a wing. I just want to show off some of the detail that we've got on these parts. They look really quite good. I'm really quite impressed with the detail on these, especially considering that we did not use silicone molds, which would yield a much more accurate print. But um, I think that these are definitely good enough for our purposes here. Now, you guys know I always got to be extra. So thanks to that UV paint that we added to our resin, not only do these parts glow under black light, which is a pretty sweet effect on its own, but thanks to the pigment powder that we added to the mix as well, they actually retain some of that glow after you've stopped exposing them to the black light. So what we can do is paint the handle of our heat hawk in black or purple, whatever color we want to make it, and then the blade we can actually get to glow under you know, certain circumstances if we charge it up enough. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this update to my tutorial on how to make two part molds of your Gunpla parts using Oyumaru and casting them in liquid resin. As always, I will put links in the description below to all the tools that I used in this video. I also hope that you dig some of the special effects that I showed off that you can achieve by adding mixers to your resin before casting it. And I hope it inspires you to play around with additives of your own. If you guys are liking this kind of content and you want to see more, please thumbs up the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, I will catch you later.